result, no result for the Hoff bifurcation was found. And this conformed with the theory that was being put forward in 2007 by Dr. David Andrew. So the, the takeaway from this is that all software will not produce a Hoff bifurcation if it has been proven not to exist. So the, the overall result is that this software is robust and it can find a Hoff bifurcation and it does not lead to error nice results. So how about this in unknown systems? Systems not known to produce a Hoff bifurcation but have not been proven not to produce it. So uh, one of which will be an MATK4 cascade. Just now was a one cascade. So this is a four cascade that looks something like this with 41 free parameters. So uh, I'll, I'll do a simple demonstration. So this software has been loaded with um, the parameters of the, the system that we were talking about just now. And now I've put in eight initial getters. So as you can see, they're slightly different from the previous one, where basically just throw in initial guesses and runs the simulation. So right now, what we're doing is we're throwing in initial guesses and using a simulator to find steady state. If steady state is found, it will store into a matrix, and then we interpolate from this matrix to generate initial guesses for the optimizer to run. So, um, so uh, let's just wait for two more iterations. Uh, sometimes, when you cannot find the steady state, you'll discard the steady state into one of the text files over there, and then the user might want to look into these parameters and see why are they discarded, and uh, and they can move on, do some analysis on them. So, uh, so let's do some running. And the thing is, most likely, you'll find that there's no possible results, that no, none of this uh, result actually led to the Hoff bifurcation. So um, moving on, a systematic search method was what we did carry out. 1,500 initial guesses was made into this system using a simulator to find steady states. And uh, the result is that, well, there's no Hoff bifurcation found. But interestingly, we found small regions of oscillation. As you can see over here, it might not be that clear, but there are some oscillations you can see in uh, the species. I've, I've not zoomed in too much because I want to capture as many species as possible for, for the user to see. And uh, it's very interesting because we find that in spite of the fact that we found oscillations, they did not arise from the Hopf bifurcation. So um, these oscillations might be very important for the chemists or the biologists as well, which um, for them to characterize their system. And uh, this, this particular set of parameters was found from the discarded parameters that, uh, that the system has thrown away because no steady state was found. And then the conclusion is no Hoff bifurcation was found. However, we cannot say conclusively that this system does not lead to the Hoff bifurcation. We can only say in a statistical sense that uh, we have high confidence level that the system does not lead to the Hoff bifurcation. So, how does our software compare with all the other softwares in the market? Well, not all, but some of them that I've come across during my during my research. So, uh, comparing with the older ones. So the older ones, as you can see, they use nonlinear transformation, symbolic manipulation. All software can use both numeric and symbolic manipulation. And comparing with the one of the earliest software that uses optimization techniques, they only allow 9 to 36 free parameters to do simulations. And as you can see, the earlier one, the unknown, the unknown system was already 41 free parameters. So uh, all software has overcome that by basically just using the method um, built-in built in, um, capability. And how about comparing with existing softwares? In 2005, one optimization, uh, one software using optimization technique was developed, and it uses one cost function. Our improvement over there was we have developed a few more cost functions. Some of them are self-developed, some of them are based on existing mathematical tools. But the increase in the number of cost functions helped the optimizer to, to convert upon solutions because of the different dynamics of the systems, different cost functions work um, to different users. And in 2007, a powerful tool, a powerful MATLAB um, developed in MATLAB, sorry, a powerful software developed in MATLAB was used specifically to analyze MAPK cascades because it's such of intensive, intense scrutiny in the past few years. And the, our software does not offer much improvements over that, but it also offers similar statistical analysis or, uh, as they have done by finding oxidations or other parts and things like that. And the small improvement that we have is that this is a very generic software. It can take in any chemical reaction network and 
generic result, you know, we are specific on MAPK analysis, which is why that is slightly more powerful than ours. And it's, in fact, even in the newest one, in 2010, where a genetic algorithm was developed specifically to look for home fabrication in power system, um, once again, our software is simpler, but it's more generic, and it will, use, it will serve as a very good starting point for the biologists or the chemists who want to look for the hot fabrication to use. So uh, having said all that, let's take a look at the strengths and the limitations of the software. The strength, as I mentioned, is more generic. It is robust. It does not lead to the hot fabrication if the system does not have the hot fabrication. We have a good library of method functions that have been developed, over, the, over 30 of them, which can allow the next user to develop one. And there are many cost functions that have been developed. The limitations is that it requires some basic method knowledge to use this function, to use this software. It's inconclusive. If a system does not produce a whole application, we cannot conclude that it does not, simply because we have not run enough simulations. And uh, there's an inherent randomness that the software uses, because we're just sampling from exponential distribution or uniform distribution. So how do we improve on that? This, will, this is, uh, um, the first one would be like, because mainly our software is targeted at the biologist or chemist who wants to look for the application. We can generate a graphic user interface, which is more intuitive and it's more interactive for them to, for them to use. And even we can, we can generate statistics for a large number of simulations we have generated. And this could provide the chemist an idea of the, number, the, percent, the percentage level of confidence that they have on the system if it does not produce a whole application. And to arrest, the randomness in the initial cases, perhaps we can use multi-color sampling or some genetic adaptive algorithm to filter out boundaries that does not that has been found not to produce a hot application and just narrow down on boundaries which produce a hot application and that will narrow down the randomness in the initial cases. In fact, we can even work with the biologist or the chemist um, to augment our simulations with experimental results such that we can find the set of parameters that they are, the range of parameters that they are interested in. Um, to do the to do the simulation check, and uh, after that, so there are certain insights that we gain from this project that I would like to share. Um, one of which is that uh, um, there are many there are many oscillations of interest to the biologists or the chemists, not just from the whole fabrication. So if it's, if it's, if there's time, we could extend our software to search for other oscillations and other bifurcations that will be very important to characterize the system dynamics, which the user might might want to or might want to find out. We can also extend our software to include other optimization algorithms um, to improve on the computational efficiency. Because right now we're just using a one size fits all algorithm used from MATLAB. So uh, this brings me to the conclusion. A basic but robust software was developed. It offered improvements over some of those available. But however there are, there are also existing there are also certain limitations but uh, despite that, I feel that this is a very good starting software for the biologists or chemists to use to look for the health applications. And so, um, at this point, I'd like to take a step back and to reflect on the past nine months and to give a verdict on my project. Because uh, at the start of the year, it was when I was given the project, I found that it was very heavy of background knowledge. There was things that I didn't know, like optimization, um, chemical reaction network theory, and even the health application which forms the core basis of my project. So I took some time to get started, but once I get started, I found it very interesting, and I found it very rewarding. And despite the fact that there were no findings of previously unknown health fabrications, I feel that my project has contributed in a way to, to, to provide more conclusive, um, well, not say conclusive, more evidence to these systems that they do not um, exhibit the health fabrication. It also then speaks to the researcher who is interested in this cascade, or this particular network, that they may actually not be looking for, that there may actually not be the hot fabrication in, what, in the system they're looking for. So I'll, I'll say that it is a success, and I, know I, can, I would like to thank Dr. David Anjali for his constant guidance and patience um, and encouragement over the past nine months, and uh, without whom I will not be able to do this project. I wish him all the best. So uh, uh, if there's any questions, I would like to answer them. Thank you. So the project was more about the software or did you actually do 